Oops, seems like I made a mistake. I noticed that episodes 10 and 11 are together, so that just leaves episode 9 by itself. So today will be just episode 9, and then soon, soon will be 10 and 11. Previously, you have redeemed yourself, my son. We haven't seen Zuko in a while, huh? Nightmares and daydreams. The official rendezvous point for the invasion force. And we're here four days ahead of schedule. The invasion's in four days? Ugh. Wow, are we really that close to the end? I guess so, huh? Hmm. Makes me a little bit sad. I don't want it to end. As much as I'm looking forward to the grand finale, because I've heard it's amazing, I think my favorite parts are just them journeying around and meeting people and interacting with each other. I'd like to see them stay on the road forever. Uh, I'm getting a little emotional now. It's hitting me that the show is over. Whatever. That's like four days from now. Let's just calm down. And You're right, Sokka. Let's just relax. Don't let the dread set in. Everything's gonna be fine. And then we have Korra. Yeah, okay, everything's fine now. Sokka's got the right idea, Aang. Yeah. The best thing we can do now is get plenty of rest. I don't know about all that. <laughs> what is that? What is rest? It's our first dream. How do you plan on doing that when you are not even wearing pants? It's funny to see Aang's dream version of the Fire Lord because I think for a lot of us, we actually did see the Fire Lord that way. And we're surprised to find out that he's super handsome and has Mark Hamill's charming voice. Dude, didn't you just go to sleep? Can you chill? Go to bed. Fresh fruit print, Zuko? Head massage? Hot towel? I just felt that. I had like a physical sensation when you did that. It was nice. I felt like I was on an airplane. <laughs> it's foaming mouth girl. See, this would be the most dangerous thing for me. It's not the luxury, it's not the pampering, it's the attention. Especially after living on that ship for so long, or living in the wilderness, and no one knowing who you are, people spitting on you, looking down on you. Just walk outside your house and get a standing ovation, and foaming mouth girl. How do you resist that? What is her house across the street? <laughs> That's good. A man needs his rest, Aang. There is such a thing as overtraining. Good night, Toph. Good night, Appa. Good night, Momo. Good night, Appa and Momo. Go to sleep already! <laughs> And this time I brought pants. And they're locked for some reason. Are you prepared for your mathematics test? Math test? Oh no! Oh no. I forgot all about the math test! Oh my god, that's terrifying. I didn't really relate too strongly to the no pants dream, because I don't have those dreams. But I do have a dream very similar to that. I have this recurring dream like once every couple months. It's the last day of finals and there's a class that I've forgotten to go to for the entire semester. And I have a chance to pass it if I pass the final, but I'm 15 minutes late for the final. I don't know what that's about. You need to go back to sleep. But I forgot my pants in my math test. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's reasonable. Ang, sleep. Yeah, no pressure. You're only the savior of the world. Being a prince and all, I might just be able to make that happen. <laughs> that would be impressive. Do you think you can find a fresh fruit tart for the lady? Zuko's really settling into this princely role here. Really enjoying the excesses of princedom. Though there's annoying stuff too. Like that all day war meeting coming up. War meeting? What are you talking about? Uh oh. I guess I wasn't invited. That's tricky for so many reasons. Like, first of all, we all know what happened after the last war meeting he attended. And secondly, Azula being invited and not him is strange. Although I kind of suspect it's a misunderstanding on his part. You missed the invasion. Yeah. Sokka, get up! I need to know what day it is! Oh, he's losing it. Don't drink that! <laughs> Why? You're unraveling. Yeah. He's going nuts. I'm losing my mind. Mm-hmm. It's just pressure. It's just tremendous pressure. It'll crush you. Almost all big endeavors have an unknown factor to them, or a luck factor to them. And all you can do in anticipation of them is just sit there and think about what ifs and they can drive you nuts. I definitely understand that feeling. It's hard to hinge that much of your being on faith. I think one way through that is to try to look at the bigger picture and realize that defeats are only temporary. Maybe your big adventure fails, but it might lead you towards something better. And also it's important to be nice to yourself. If one of your friends was doing something like that and putting themselves through hell and obviously fatigued and overworked and driving themselves crazy, you would tell them to stop and you would do it because you, you cared about them, you were concerned for them. So why wouldn't you also do that for yourself? It's interesting that we hold ourselves to harsher standards than we do to others we care about. You think that somehow your suffering 
is okay because it's you. Like, you'll suffer and that's fine because, well, you know, I'm, I'm suffering. I deserve to suffer. But it's wrong. It's important for you to have balance just as it is for your friend to have balance. But Aang is in his own head. He's just going crazy. He thinks he's not good enough. He's going to push himself to the limits in a way that's unhealthy. Every time I think about how stressed I am, I just end up more stressed. I'm like a big growing snowball of nerves. That's because you gotta fight the Fire Lord, the baddest man on the planet. Oh no, second, And you better no. win or we're all done for. No. Fuck up. You're not helping. What? It's true. That's the deal. He knows it. <laughs> you know That's what? Great. I've got just the thing. I get what Sokka's trying to do. I feel that way. I like when people just are direct with me. If somehow I can get real comfort that's not based on lies, then that's good. That's not always possible. Sometimes, you know, you gotta crash and burn before you can rise from the ashes. But I understand what Aang means about going in a downward spiral. I think that that's a common thing. Like, if we have an issue, we tend to try to think ourselves out of it. It's like, I'm so stressed, I shouldn't be stressed. But the problem with that is, that makes you more focused on the stress. Once your reasoning ability is, is corrupted by that emotion, you can't reason your way out of it because it's it's not trustworthy. It's not a reliable faculty anymore. So it's better just to replace it with a different activity completely. Let's see what Katara has in mind. Reach for the sun. That's good, yeah. This looks good. I feel really warm. Good. Uh-oh. Good. Warm like fire? Uh, like I'm in the Fire Lord's palace and he's shooting a bunch of fireballs at me. And the whole world is being engulfed in flames. He's too deep. Tell me what's been bothering you. Shrink Sokka. I'm supposed to defeat him and save the world. Mm, life does feel that way sometimes, doesn't it? Like we're all trying to save the world. <laughs> he literally is, though. <laughs> this is such an adult episode. It's like, would kids understand this? I don't know. I don't remember, like, thinking about stress as a kid. I mean, I know I was, but not like this. You probably just weren't invited because it's so obvious that you're supposed to be there. Forget it. I'm not going. Still throwing temper tantrums. There's one other thing we can try. Acupuncture. No thanks. It's just a dumb meeting. Who cares? I don't. Yes, you do. Just think about how things went at the last war meeting you went to. Oh. I know. But that's why it's such a big thing. Because of what happened last time. It's like, that's a sore spot. It's a chip on his shoulder that he's, he's not going to be able to put aside until he's respected as someone who could participate in those meetings. So it's not really about him actually wanting to be part of the war meeting. It's a symbol of a way he feels inadequate. It's the link to a past trauma that he literally wears on his face. So of course it's a big deal for him. He's not going to be able to forget it. Uh, I kind of think I sort of might slightly feel a little better. Then our work here is done. <laughs> Good job, Sokka. You did it. Nailed it. This is cool. This is the most terrifying dream because his friends are actually dying. Okay, that was actually terrifying. Nothing helps. There's only one thing I can do. I'm gonna stay awake straight through to the invasion. <laughs> no. No. I told you, I can't go back to sleep. It's weird because I'm watching this super late at night and I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> Oh, speaking of parallels. Staying up all night can't be good for you. Okay, mom. I'm doing it for the people I love. I'm doing it for you, Katara. Aang, oh. what are you saying? I'm saying, I love you. Is this a dream? Yeah. No, it's a, it's a dream. Is it real? Baby, you're my forever girl. It's a dream. Aang. <laughs> Uh -huh. They almost had me. They almost had me. What was your dream about? Uh, living underwater? <laughs> Go for it. Just do it. I'm gonna push over. <laughs> How many times can I use that joke? My dad wants me at the meeting? The fire lord said he would not start until you arrived, sir. Wow. Everything's coming up, Zuko. Did you hear something? No, but I said something. Hmm. Uh, let me explain. <laughs> That's reasonable. I talk to my cats, but I talk in English. They understand me very well. You've been awake too long. And you're acting downright weird. You've got to take care of yourself. I'll pass such a beautiful, sexy voice. <laughs> ah! 
Didn't expect we'd be getting a Momo Appa fight scene. My money's on Appa. Look at that technique. This is too much. I'm like a little bit. This is oddly hip, hypnotizing, hypnotic. During the meeting, I was the perfect prince. The son my father wanted. But I wasn't me. Hmm. It's cool that he has a concept of what that is, even. Since that's been part of his struggle for so long. I don't need sleep. What I need is practice. Quick, hit me. <laughs> I'm not going to hit you. You want me to do it? <laughs> kind of, yeah. You're smart, brave, and strong enough. You really think so? We all do. You're the man, Twinkle Toes. Thanks, guys. It's cool that they believe in him. When it's right around the corner like this, and it's gonna happen one way or the other, there's no sense in worrying. At some point, you just have to let go and hope that your hard work will pay off. <sighs> go to sleep, Aang. That looks so comfortable. You know what? I think I am ready. You're gonna take me out? You're not even wearing pants. No, Fire Lord Ozai. You're not wearing pants. Oh, flip the script on him. My royal parts are showing! I'm really hearing the Mark Hamill now. <laughs> His friends really did him a solid there, giving him that vote of confidence. Undoubtedly, they feel fear about it. They're all going into it together. It shows real loyalty, and it also shows real strength of character, because it's reasonable to be freaking out. Most of the responsibility is on Aang as the Avatar, but they all play a role and they all are risking their lives. The three of them are showing a lot of strength, not only putting aside their worry, but putting it aside and then also being supportive. It speaks really well of the three of them. I guess that was a short episode. I'll see you for the two-parter coming soon.